this lesson, I'll talk about the type of equipment that you will need to develop code and train on. In terms of the equipment that you'll need, the first thing you'll need is a computer. You'll need to decide what is best for you, a desktop computer or a laptop. A laptop has the advantage that this is a mobile device and you really can develop anywhere. But a desktop device is generally faster and allow you a better long-term environment for writing code. You can also use a hybrid environment by using a fast notebook computer and then attach a large screen monitor to it when you're at home so you have a much more comfortable environment to develop code on. You'll also need periodic access to a printer to print out materials to help you train for your coding exercises. You may find that you can do without this if you're comfortable reading long articles on screen. However, many people find that they prefer printed material over reading material on, on screen. This choice is really up to you. The next item you need to consider is what software you will need. You'll need a base operating to system to run your software development environment tools, office automation software, and backup software. The choice will depend on the programming language you decide to develop on. I'll cover this more in more detail in the upcoming slides. The last item you'll need is some basic home networking equipment. You will need access to the internet and you'll need to decide if you have a notebook computer as your computer of choice, you also need a wireless connection to make your development environment portable. Fortunately, home wireless connections are very affordable and now easy to come by. Next, you'll need to decide on your preferred programming language. Some of the more common choices for programming languages are Java from Oracle, the .NET platform from Microsoft, or the LAMP platform, which is really Linux, MySQL, and PHP. If you're going to develop for the Java platform, you can either utilize Windows operating system or Linux. If you decide to develop with Microsoft.NET, you really have no choice but to develop on the Windows platform. Also, if you decide to develop for the LAMP platform, you really need to run Linux as your development computer. Another consideration is to decide whether you're going to develop web-based applications, software for mobile applications, or desktop software. If you decide you're going to develop mobile applications, you'll probably need several physical devices to test your software on. Although you can use emulators for this, it's best to run final tests on actual physical hardware to make sure they work without any issues. Here's some pitfalls to avoid when you're building your development environment. I can't emphasize enough that you'll need to get the fastest computer you can possibly afford to develop code on. Developing on old hardware and software will only lead to frustration and present a huge hurdle for you to overcome. Most of the software vendors now have free development tools that you can download from the internet. Examples of this are Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition, the Eclipse environment for Java, and tools for Linux and LAMP development. I'll include links for these on how to get these tools as an attachment to this lesson. As far as the hardware necessary for a typical .NET environment, you'll need a PC with a minimum of an i5 processor although an i7 processor or equivalent is preferred. You'll also need a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM, although, again, 16 would be better if you can afford it. Windows 10 is the current operating system and probably the best environment for the current .NET development, although you could use Windows Server 2012 if you're using the cloud for development environment. You should also get a 1 terabyte hard drive for installing software such as Visual Studio Community Edition 2015, Microsoft SQL Server Express, and you can use Visual Studio Team Services for source control. Next, for a typical dev Java development environment, you should have the choice of using a PC or a Mac. Either one of these should have at least an i5 processor or better. You'll need 8 gigabytes of RAM on your computer, although once again, 16 would be better if you can afford it. After getting your PC, you can download and install Eclipse for free as well as the MySQL database from Oracle. You can also use Visual Studio Team Services for source control, even though it's a Microsoft product. It's also a free web-based product. For the LAMP environment, you can probably get by with a little less processor since the Linux operating system is very lightweight in terms of resources. There are many varieties of the Linux operating such as Ubuntu, Red Hat, and others. You'll have to decide which one is best for you. Your last consideration for your development environment is to consider building your development environment in the cloud. Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS both offer reasonable hosting fees to build your development server on. 
You can build a very fast machine and only pay for the server when it's running. By doing this, you can build a much faster machine in the cloud and simply turn it off when you're not using it. Both Microsoft and Amazon offer free packages to get started. However, these machines are typically not fast enough to run complex development environments. Another advantage of developing cloud-based servers is the internet connection to these machines is extremely fast and downloading and installing software is significantly faster in the cloud than on your home computer. I'm currently doing this and I found my productivity has increased significantly. Another advantage of doing this is you will not have to invest in a fast computer. Simply rent the time on the cloud and pay for what you use. I highly recommend you do this. If you do this, make sure you turn the computer off when you're not using it, as these vendors charge by the minute for a running computer. I'm currently spending about $20 to $30 a month to run my development server on Amazon AWS. In summary, just a few tips for you as you build your development environment. The first one is to find the fastest hardware you can afford, as these development tools use a lot of resources and you'll be frustrated with the slow development environment if you do not get a fast computer. I also highly recommend that you look at cloud alternatives to lower your cost and, inc and increase your compute power. Also make sure you keep your software tools up to the latest version. This again will help minimize problems that you encounter along the way. Another tip is to utilize source control so you can store the code you're, as you're practicing along the way. You can use such tools as a Visual Studio Team System, CodePlex, or even Dropbox to store your source code. After investing a lot of time of writing code, you don't want to lose it by not having it backed up in a proper location. This con concludes the lesson. I hope I've given you some good information on building your development environment. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks again.